Okay, this is the multiple choice section from Edexcel GCE A2 Physics, Unit 4 Physics on the Move, uh, June 2010. Question 1. The number of neutrons in a nucleus of uh, 197.79 gold is how much? Well, again, we have the idea that we have 79 protons in here, and we have 197 nucleons. So to get the neutrons, we take the 79 off the 179, and that gives us 118B. Question 2 then. Electric field strength can have the units of one of these. So this is just uh, basic book work from your notes. Remember that electric field strength is the force uh, per unit charge. So that means that newtons per coulomb is appropriate here. Question 3. A tennis ball is travelling horizontally with a momentum of 0.4 kilogram meter per second just before it hit, is hit with a tennis racket. It rebounds horizontally from the tennis racket with a momentum of 0.6 kilogram meter per second. The graph shows a variation of the momentum of the ball during this process. So we have this graph and it's showing what has been happening. So we have the original momentum, then we have a reversal of momentum, and it goes to this value. So the question asks is what's the force on this? And the force on something is the rate at which the momentum is changing. So on this graph we have a change of momentum, which is that difference there. And we have a time taken, which is that there. So this is delta P, this vertical thing, and this is delta T. And the force is the ratio of those two. So we can see that delta P here is one kilogram meter per second. And that delta T here, if um, we just take a look at it, is uh, four milliseconds. So we've got one over 4 times 10 to the minus 3. So which one of these then is it? So F is delta P over delta T which is 1 over 4 milliseconds. And that comes out to be 250 newtons, which makes it answer C. Question 4. The derivation of the formula EK is P squared over 2M could include the following expression. So one of these expressions is appropriate for developing the relationship that kinetic energy is p squared over 2m. So we just take these in turn. Um, a half mv squared equal to p squared. Um, the units don't match. p squared would be the same as m squared v squared. So the units wouldn't match up for that one. P squared equals a half m squared v squared. The units would match, but I'm not sure where that's coming from. 
so the half is turned up there for no real obvious reasons. Uh, P squared over M equal to M squared V squared. Again, that's dimensionally incorrect. The units don't match up. Uh, P squared, if you, if you took this M back up, you would get M squared V squared equal to P squared. So that makes some kind of sense. So that will be the one we're looking for. Question 5. The distance in metres from an electron at which the electric field strength equals this value is one of these. Okay, so this is straightforward. Calculate the electric field strength um, and relate it to the R value of how far you are out. So we need expression for electric field strength. And that's uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over R squared. And that means that R is going to equal the square root of 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over E. And filling that in, I'm getting this value of 1.5 times 10 to the minus 9, which means it's D. Okay, question six then. An uncharged capacitor is connected to a battery. Which graph shows the variation of charge with potential difference across the capacitor? So this relates to your uh, capacitor equation. Q equals CV. And what that's saying, basically, is this is in the form of uh, y equals mx, because the capacitance of a capacitor is going to be a constant. So this is like the equation of a straight line. So it's going to be this one. Question 7. Which of the following is not a valid conclusion from Rutherford's alpha particle scattering experiments? Uh, so we're looking for the not here. The atom is mostly empty space, that's true. The nucleus contains protons and neutrons, not sure about that. Nucleus must be charged, that's true, that comes out of Rutherford. Nucleus must be very small compared to the atom, that ties in with the first one. Um, Rutherford's experiment can't tell us the contents of the nucleus, so we're talking B there. Question 8. A 50 turn square coil of side 0.06 of a meter is placed in a magnetic field of flux density 0.4 tesla. The plane of the coil is at right angles to the direction of the magnetic field and you're showing it there. So we can't see the coil, we can just see a plan view of it here. And they're asking which one of these is the linkage. Okay, well, phi is equal to B A, and the linkage N phi is equal to N B A. So we just remind ourselves of the values. N is 50, B is 0.4 Tesla, and A is 0.06. And we need to square that because it's a length times width thing. And so we've got 50 times 0.4 times 0.06 squared. So we just need to fire that into our calculator. And I'm getting 0.072 of a Weber. So it must be A. Question 9. The diagram shows the path of an electron in a bubble chamber. Which of the following can you deduce from the diagram? Electron is moving in an anti-clockwise, electron is moving clockwise, magnetic field is acting out of the page, speed of the electron is increasing. Well, the most obvious thing 
to realize about a diagram like this is that if a particle is spiraling it's because it's losing energy it's not going to be gaining energy in the bubble chamber so this particle must be spiraling inwards as it loses energy because uh, an object with lower momentum will have a smaller circle so anything that's circle of motion is getting smaller is slowing down now if we just quickly look at a part of the motion here this part of the motion that we've drawn we've got an electron going that way so if we've got an electron going that way that corresponds to current going that way we've got a force this way to make it move in the circle as it turns and uh, if you get your left hand rule and point your finger straight at the page we've got B into the page causing your thumb to point towards the middle while your current finger points back from the motion of the electron so field is definitely into the page um, but we didn't really need to do any of this because we only have a choice between clockwise and anti-clockwise and this is clearly going clockwise because we've already established that so the answer is B all these other answers are wrong it's not anti-clockwise the field isn't out of the page and the electron isn't speeding up okay question 10 which of the following quantities would the de Broglie equation be used to calculate and so this is straight book work. De Broglie said that um, a particle would have an associated wavelength which was related to Planck's constant over its momentum. So this is all about calculating the wavelength belonging to a moving particle. So it's C. And that's that.